Hey all, Tom Moran here from Thomas Big Spires. This episode, we're going to be taking a look at the widely popular T. albopilosis or the curly hair tarantula. People love these. They made the top of my beginner species list. A lot of folks started with this species. It's for good reason. They're awesome spiders. They eat great. They grow relatively fast when talking about some of the beginner species out there. And we'll talk more about that in the video. And they're just so darn cute with their perpetual bad hair days. So there's a reason why they're as, a po as popular as they are. I had actually avoided them early on when I was first in the hobby, but now I've kept, I think, four or five of them over the years. Unfortunately, quite a few males, but they're amazing spiders. So I'm always having people ask for updates on mine. This one here, we're going to rehouse my adult female into something new. So hopefully she can do a little digging. So enough of me talking, let's take a look at T. albopilosis. All right, so we're about to rehouse my adult female, Tlitocotl, I think it is. I never can pronounce this right. T. albopilosis, or the famous curly hair tarantula. This is one where a while back when I did my top, I think it was top 13 best species to begin with when you're getting into the tarantula hobby, as chosen by keepers. This one was number one. It is one of the most popular spiders in the hobby. It is a great beginner. They are very hardy. They grow compared to some of the other beginner species like Gramostola, Brachypelma, Fonipelma. They grow rather quickly, depending on which specimen you have. We'll talk about that in a growth rate. They're usually fairly laid back and tame. We'll talk about that as well. And they're quite fluffy, which makes them a little more, I, I don't know, cuddly looking to people when they're trying to anthropomorphize these or looking for a spider that doesn't look quite so creepy right off the bat. So I've had this girl now for 10 years, I realized. I was kind of shocked at this. And when I picked her up, she was like three to four inches or 10.16 centimeters or so. And she, I bought her as a sex female because I was trying to do my first video on the best beginner species. And I was, I only had a sling at this hour, two different slings. So I picked this girl up in a male, which I actually sent off because she was not, not ready to breed when he matured out. I have also raised up two others from slings. One of them was the Nicaraguan form. Now, a note on growth rate. This is where things really vary from person to person. I've found out over the years. Many folks report that theirs grow very, very quickly. So I've had folks that told me their, theirs went from like three quarter inches to three or four inches in a year. Mine have grown, have grown a little more slowly. I will say the Nicaraguan male, and I don't know if it's because it was a Nicaraguan species or if it was because it was a male, grew very quickly. As a matter of fact, I think now he's about five years old. He matured out about two years ago. So put on a lot of size, molted frequently, put on a lot of size quickly and grew quickly. This one here was obviously quite old and established when I got her, so she didn't grow as quickly. My other one was a male. He ended up being a male. That one took about seven years to mature out or so. So that one grew a little more slowly. So growth rate may change from spider to spider. Just keep that in mind. But no, overall, they're great eaters and they grow much faster than a lot of the other beginner species. So if Billy backs up for a minute, I'm going to show what I have her into. Now, this is not one of these rehousings I'm doing because it's, nece it's necessary at the moment. I picked these containers up, I think, from Target a while back to try out for some of my terrestrial species. I like the fact they offered a little more space than the Sterilite ones that are Billy goes right back, those back there that I love using that are good for medium-sized spiders. This offered a little more space, but unfortunately, they're a bit flimsy. The tops don't lock down well, so I have to basically stack them up. The top ones I have to use a bungee for. I can't remember. I Probably the last time I rehoused this one, I probably talked about this. And although it seems to hold the cover down, when you pick them up, they kind of flop around. They just kind of weird me out a little bit, so I'm kind of phasing these out. I've already phased two of them out. This will be the third, and I have one more after that. So I'm going to put her into something different. The other reason I want to rehouse this one is if you see here, she has, uh, she wasn't burrowing for a while. I put her into this one. There really wasn't enough room to burrow. There's only like maybe ah, inch and a half of substrate to maybe two inches of substrate. But she obviously wanted to do some burrowing because under a cork bark here, she kind of made herself a burrow. So she pulled dirt out the back, dirt out the front, made a little area in here. And then the last time she molted, she stayed in there. And a lot of times she runs to this. So notice... Last video, I can't remember which one Billy and I were just talking about this. Somebody gave me grief because normally when I do a rehousing and I start with the spider out, I block out the entrances and exits to their burrow so they don't go down in there. So it makes the rehousing a lot easier. So we did make sure we did that this time. So little tip, 
If your spider's out and about, you know they can retreat to the burrow when you're trying to rehouse and block the burrow off. Even though in this case, honestly, all I would have had to do is lift this up. She would have been right there. So a note about temperament. These guys are coveted because of the fact that females are supposedly very, very, very laid back. However, temperament can, can vary. I think the majority of folks will talk about spiders that are very laid back and even tractable. However, this one here is a great example of spiders that start off maybe one way and change another after a molt. So when I first got her, very slow moving, laid back. If I was into handling spiders, she would have been one I would have went, yep, I have no problem handling her. However, she molted a couple times and with each molt, she's become a little more skittish. So she's behaving right now. We'll see what happens when we go to better, put her in here. But a lot of times when I open this up, she runs around. She's a little more skittish than she was before. So the new enclosure we're putting her into is this one over here that unfortunately I'm not going to put a link to because Amazon no longer carries them. I think a lot of them broke in transit. I know when I went to order them, the ratings were kind of bad on some of them because people were having them arrive broken, but it is a glass terrarium. It is eight inches across by 11 inches deep by 16 inches long. So a decent amount of surface area. I like the fact that it's deeper because I got about four inches of substrate here, almost five inches, maybe even more, six inches in the back. And what we're going to do is give this girl an opportunity to burrow. This is what I've been doing with a lot of my spiders lately. Sure, she can live as a terrestrial, but as I've noted, she's been a little more skittish. So that could be because she doesn't feel completely safe in her surroundings. So we're going to give her some room to dig here. Now, what I have, the substrate is my own mix of cocoa fiber. And Pete, the bottom layers are moist. And then I don't know if it's going to show. You can see kind of here. You can, you can flash see it. it. You can see it. Okay. Yeah. The bottom layer, and there's actually, sadly, this right in here is actually dry as well. I used something that had more peat in it, so it was a little darker. But I put a moist layer on the bottom, a drier layer on top. We'll see. What I want to see is if she'll dig down to the moisture. Now, a word about moisture with these spiders. This can be very confusing because you'll read things that say they absolutely need it moist, but some of them don't appear to like the moisture. So what I usually do, slings, I keep slightly moist at all times. Juveniles, slightly moist at all times. Adults, for her, I will moisten down half of this. She doesn't show any affinity toward it. She doesn't hang around it. So I don't think she really cares one way or another if the substrate in here is moist. However, other folks have reported theirs will hang around the water dish and hang around moist spots. If you see your spider hanging around a moist spot or a water dish, it usually means they're craving a little more moisture. You want to make sure you keep things a little moist at one end. Usually what I would do, like in this case, what I'm going to do is keep the bottom layers moist so she can burrow down, find the moisture level she needs. In something like this, I would moisten down part of it. And then as it started to dry out, moisten maybe another corner. And I kind of rotate so that you don't get one corner that stays sopping at all times. So let's get her into her new enclosure. Oh, as far as what I got in here, we got a piece of cork bark, big piece of cork bark. Starter burrow under here. I'm not going to keep this overly moist, so I just kind of put in some New Zealand sphagnum moss for looks. And then we have leaf litter in here. And I will be taking her water. Well, I'm going to be taking her water dish right now. I'm putting it right in here. There we go. Nope. Hidden boluses. Let me put those over here. So I cross the camera. So what we're going to do now, a note, I was on arachnoboards. I don't know if you saw this one because I know you're on arachnoboards more than I am, but somebody said on arachnoboards that they don't like my videos because I'm scared of my spiders, which I was, <laughs> yeah, I, oh my. Not, not just scared, <laughs> very scared of my spiders. So A, you're turning down good information because you think I'm scared of spiders. B, I think what happens is people, there are folks out there doing YouTube videos, and I want to make this very, very clear, that use what we call the poke and pray method. It's when you have a spider, you poke it in the butt, you kind of steer it to where you want it to go, and then the spider goes from point A to point B. And we've used it before. However, it's risky. I'm always trying to show people the absolute safest way to move these for the spider and the person. So 99% of the time, this spider, I could probably poke her. She'd climb up. She'd probably hold it here. She'd go right in. Great. That one time, 1%, she bolts. We could end up with a dead spider. We are above the ground. She could fall. I kind of explain it like this. When you take your dog out, sure, you may have a dog that stays right next to you and listens to all your commands. It should always be on a leash. That's the safe thing to do to make sure the dog doesn't bolt off. Catch cups, it's an easy way of making sure that you're safe, the spider's safe, and that's what it's all about. So I think what they see is folks who go, I, I can't tell you how many times I do these videos and somebody comes up, why are you scared of it? Pick it up because that's not the proper way to move one of these. That's not the safest way to move one of these. So what we're going to do now is get her in here. I feel like I need to say that every once in a while because, and, and somebody will come on and go, don't worry about it. Well, when you have, when you're doing spider information, and people tell people that you're afraid of spiders, it's not a good look and it's kind of frustrating, especially when you spent the last 20 years getting over a fear of spiders. So what we're gonna do is just drop this right on here, her here. Oh, I'm so scared. 
<laughs> oh, please don't hurt me. Uh, the other thing I want to point out, and I did a podcast on this, and I may post the link to it. I did a podcast on tarantula stress. I don't know why people think that this is stressful, the spider. This right now, let me explain. These guys are very sensitive to airflow. So when you have a spider bolt, I've had it happen before where I just breathed on it the wrong way. Somebody's opened a door, created a draft that I didn't feel. Those hairs are super sensitive. So right now, this is blocking off a lot of that airflow that's making the spider feel more secure. That's what it's about. This is actually very stress-free. And I can back this up by the fact that I would say 90% of the spiders I rehouse Right after I rehouse them, I feed them and they eat. They're not stressed. They they get over it very quickly. Sure, right now she's like, what's going on? In a minute, she's going to be just fine. There you go, girl. <laughs> of course, when I was talking to somebody, like, why don't you just show you, pick them one of them up? Because I'm not going to go against what I believe to prove to dingleberries that I it's got nothing to do with being scared of spiders. There you go, girl. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. It, I crazy. almost responded. I don't. I don't oh respond God. on. Uh, I'm on rack, racking boards all the time, lurking, and there's great people on there. Great information. I love reading some of the stuff on it. There you go. Calm as could be, and I don't normally respond to anything. I'm not one of those people that needs to go out and defend myself because usually somebody will jump in, and they did. Somebody's went, no, this is what he does, and again, it comes down to I use the same techniques with an old world that I would use with the new world species. Because again, it's all about safety. The poke and pray, I can tell you for a fact, I have spoken to people. I just had somebody email me two weeks ago that watched somebody demonstrate, I won't say a name, watched somebody demonstrate a method of just kind of poking the spider. The spider bolted, hit the floor, ended up with two broken legs, was leaking. Not a good situation. Why put the risk out there? Why allow that type of risk? It's again, dangerous for the spider as much as it can be dangerous for you. Why well, get a handful of hairs? The other thing is I've had them kick all the time. You can see very relaxed, calm, gorgeous little girl. Now, what I'm hoping she's going to do, I'm really hoping I'm going to get some burrowing on her. I want to see some of that burrowing behavior. I'm hoping that she'll go under there, clean some of this out, create a nice burrow. And obviously, if she does that, we will do an update on it to show her off. But uh, as far as the enclosure is concerned, I am really liking the size of this enclosure. It looks like it's appropriate, uh, appropriately sized for her. If somebody were looking to put her into something different, because obviously they don't make these anymore, the other thing I considered putting her into is one of the Exoterra minis, the 12 by 12 by 12 inch cubes or 31 centimeters. I think it's 31 by 31 by 31. That would work as well. You're just going to want to make sure you angle the substrate so that there's room for her to burrow. You could use, um, what are they, the reptile growth enclosures, the larger ones. You could use, I believe, tarantula cribs makes a 12 by 12 by 12 one. That would work great. The ones that are made more for fossorials that have the higher vents would be better. Anything of that size, and you could go even larger. So do know you can set up a larger enclosure. If I did some Billy back supplement, say I were to put this one in a 10-gallon enclosure that would probably be like here, I would probably do a starter burrow over here with cork bark, one over here as well to give her a choice. So that way she's not exposed. And I would probably put some plants in there. This one right now I think is going to be just fine. All right. So as far as raising these guys up, easy as pie, slings, dram vials when they're super small. Again, keep the bottom levels moist, top levels dry. Don't give them too much. They will burrow. I've had them burrow as slings. I've had them burrow as juveniles. And we'll see. Hopefully this one does a little burrowing as adults. So that's nothing to worry about. They eat great. They hit like trucks. I think that's one of the reasons they're so popular is they are ravenous eaters. I love watching this one eat. She's been a great eater since I got her. As far as the rest of the care, I did. I have done other videos on these guys. So what I will do is at the end of this video, I will put links to that. And you can go and check out the other ones that I did on. But So there we go. T. albopelosis. This would be the, they've referred to it sometimes as the hobby form or the Honduran, I believe is the one they do. I think it's the Honduran, not the Costa Rican, maybe the Costa Rican. The Nicaraguans, just to tell you the difference, the Nicaraguans are generally much darker overall and very, very fuzzy, much fuzzier. And a lot of folks think that maybe there has been some crossbreeding over the years with other species, which is why some of these, I had one a while back that looked like she was probably mated with some other, maybe a Boggins or something, but she had some of the curly hair but not nearly as much as they normally have. So there we go, T. albopelosis. 
So one thing I wanted to mention about the new enclosure I gave her, that originally came with a wire mesh top. I actually ripped out the wire mesh and replaced it with drilled plastic. So just a heads up if people should find these. I can't remember who makes them. Again, I tried to look them up on Amazon and they're not even listed on Amazon under orders anymore. But uh, they are awesome little enclosures and I have a few of them now. Unfortunately though, right before I did this video, I took one outside to clean it out and I accidentally broke it. So now I'm down to only like four of them, I think. But anyway, that's not the only enclosure you could use for it. The barbarous growth ones, the longer ones, either the five gallon or even the 10 gallon would be fantastic. As I mentioned, the Exoterra minis would be great for one. And um, the, I believe, Torrential Cribs makes a couple of the cubes. The ones with the actually no door on the front, the, the sliding door, the magnet door on the top would be great for it because you put a little substrate in. I will obviously update folks as to whether or not this one burrows right now. She's still sitting right in the, out in the open. Proving me wrong, being rather calm overall. And just a note about temperament. Again, it can vary from spider to spider. So although we can make blanket statements for a lot of these different species that overall the adults are generally laid back, always know that they're individual animals. So somebody might have one that's a little more feisty and high strung. And I have spoken to some folks that have some crazy t elbows. So just a heads up there, but awesome, amazing species. She's already eating a roach right now. So again, no stress during the rehouse. I just wanted to state that because every once in a while, I feel like I have to remind folks why I do things the way I do it. And the reason I rehouse them has nothing to do with fear of the spiders whatsoever. It's because it's the absolute safest way to do it. And I die on that hill because having a spider running around free, poking in the butt works great most of the times. The one time it doesn't, you have a spider that's dead on the floor with a you know exploded abdomen. And I have heard many cases of that, sadly. So that'll do it for this one. As always, if you liked it enough to subscribe, very much appreciate. Click the little circle up in there. I'm going to put my other Tiabo videos over here. You take the time to comment. I'll take the time to respond. Just know it can take me a couple days. Guys, stay safe. Catch you all next time.